Hello and welcome to Biology Explained. We're here in a very windy field today to find out something pretty interesting. We're going to find out what exactly these mounds are on the ground. Now, it's pretty interesting and this whole field is full of them. And I always thought they were just kind of random occurrences or like something to do with, you know, the ground not being used for a long time. But as we'll find out today, it's actually... So, I'm back in the house after I've been on that walk. It was pretty interesting. I was on that walk, walking along, and I came across this field full of these kind of grassy mounds. And I had no idea what they were, but all I could see is the field was full of them as far as for the entire field, pretty much. It was really weird and really interesting. These kind of hillocky, grassy things. No idea what they were. So I looked them up online, wondering, what are these? It must be... I honestly couldn't no idea what they were. All I knew is the field had probably never been farmed before, so whatever they were had been built up over a long period of time. And so when I looked up online, I found out they were actually created by an insect, which is blew my mind that an insect had made all these hundreds of mounds that were across this entire field. Now, this really surprised me because I didn't know there were insects in the UK that made these kind of mounds like this. Like, they almost look like termite mounds, although not quite as big that you would get in another country. But here they were, a whole field full of them in the UK. And so, yes, I said they were created by an insect, and in fact they were created by an ant called the yellow field ant, or the yellow meadow ant. And it was an interesting, like, a big ant mounds just all over this entire field. Now, when I looked them up, they actually ended up being a pretty common ant found all over Europe. But the reason I don't really see them or think about them very much is that they primarily live underground and they rarely venture outside of their burrows, which is why I could hardly find any of these ants around their nest when I was looking at them. So I then delved a bit deeper and looked up some papers to see if I could find anything about these ants and their lifestyle. And I found a paper uh, by Earl, which actually said that mound density, so the number of these mounds, could reach as high as 2,500 per hectare, which is a high number, to be honest. And this field looked like it had been kind of almost maximized uh, to that. It had as many colonies as it possibly could. Now, I did also find out that the occupation of these ants, they didn't all necessarily have to have ants living in them. And most of them would probably be abandoned or have some other kind of ant species. I didn't really see any other ants, so I assume most of these were abandoned uh, and the ants were probably living in a nest somewhere else. And that's pretty interesting because that means there's so many nests in this field that this field has been full of these ant colonies for like maybe hundreds of years, which was really an amazing thing to learn. And these mounds can live for like, you know, 150 years at least before they start getting degraded. And the fact there were so many means maybe hundreds of years of mounds of ants living here. Now, I also was interested to find out how these ants live. Like they apparently rarely leave their nests. They live underground their entire life cycle. So like, what do they do to get their food? And apparently they feed from a process that is called a trophobiosis, which is a relation in which an organism of one kind, i.e. the ants, aids and protects an organism of another kind in return for some kind of food products. And in this kind of case, the organism is a thing called a root aphid. So it's like a normal aphid, which lives on a plant, but these ones live in the nest with the ants and eat off the roots of like the grass growing above them. And so the ants actually breed these aphids, root aphids, in their nests, so they're protected. The ants gain, the aphids gain by being protected by the ants from outside predators. And in return, these aphids produce honeydew, which the ants eat. I mean, it's not all win-win for both species because the ants sometimes eat the aphids when they run out of food, but it's a pretty interesting kind of symbiotic relationship. And it does mean the ants and the aphids barely ever have to leave the ass, which is why I didn't find any when I was looking. Maybe I didn't look hard enough. So honestly, really an amazing answer to my question. And it shows how easy it is to kind of find interesting things out there when you really go and looking about why this field was just full of these hilly mounds. And it's a simple enough answer. It's hundred years, hundreds of years of ant colonies, which apparently build these big mounds to, uh, so they can control their temperature. And it truly was an amazing find, to be honest. And it's an interesting thing. So be on the lookout now when you go walking. You could just see a whole field full of these hilly bounds and you'll be able to tell people what they are. 